You stood before creation. With eternity in your hand, you spoke the earth into motion. And when I fell, you stood before my failure, and you carried the cross for my shame. Oh, my sin was weighed upon your shoulders. And so upon salvation I will walk, with your spirit alive in me, my life to declare your promise. I will stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. My soul surrendered to you, O Lord. All I am is yours. Somebody just say amen. amen. That's, that's good. Before, b- before we have the ushers come down, I want to um, listen. Let me just say last night we had uh, the, um, the light system really glitch out on us during the sermon. Uh, threw me for a curve. I'm going to blame that for the fact I preached one of the worst sermons I've preached in 20 years. And um, oh, trust me. <laughs> Y'all think that ain't possible, but let me tell you something. It's possible. So we're going old school today. We're just opening the windows and uh, we're not going to worry about it. The lights go out. We're not going to worry about it. We're just going to keep going. I don't know what it is with our technology the past few weeks, but it's been giving us fits. And so we're just going to do without it because we need the Holy Spirit, not the technology. Everybody all right? Uh, Having said that, I want to show you a video, though, and that's because some of you will remember some of you will remember uh, back uh, when the hurricanes hit last fall. Uh, when the hurricane hit specifically Houston, um, we took up an offering. We gave up an entire week's offering. And you guys, you guys really came through. Those of you who maybe were not here in the fall, these guys came through and we gave away $200,000 that weekend. And it was, it was really an amazing thing. And um, we sent 100,000 of it to World Hope International. They have sent us a video that we've shown you. Uh, Samaritan's Purse just sent us a video as well. And so I want to show you that, and then I'll explain to you what's going on in it, okay? So let's take a look at this. Samaritan's Purse had five major teams in the Houston area during this event. You funded three of those five teams to be there. Those teams provided housing, food, and the necessities of everyday life for about 300 families that they could count. It says here those were the ones that they could count, and they said there were probably more than that. And the funding paid for an ongoing, a little longer period of time for 900 volunteers to be serving on the ground while we were there. That's what you accomplished through the power of God and what God does through us. I I just need you to know, I just need you to know that when God's people listen to God's voice and take the resources God has given them and put them in the place God tells them to put them, awesome and powerful things take place. All right. I... I'm really not trying. I, I'm really not trying to bolster a, an offering because, quite frankly, God always provides. But I do want you to understand: this summer you're going to go on vacation, and you're going to you're going to buy food that's too expensive, and you're going to pay for a ride at an amusement park that's going to last 30 seconds and leave you sick for an hour and a half. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna pay for go kart rides. You're gonna you're gonna do all that kind of stuff. And you know what? Enjoy yourself. That's awesome. But you will never put a dollar 
anywhere more important than when you put it in the eternal name of Jesus Christ. This is where it matters. So I just want to encourage you as we, as we move to offering, I want you to know God really is using you powerfully. Let me have the ushers come down and help us with the giving of tithes and offerings. Um, I will say one other thing. Um, I don't know if I have permission to do this or not. Um, this week at this church, you need to know that the Lord allowed us to save lives, literally, this week here as people stopped here. To, honestly, on the way to end their life, Jesus. stopped here. God. And Pastor had, God had Pastor Aaron standing at the door. And God saved, God saves lives through this stuff. I just need you to know that what we do here matters and it's a whole lot more than you coming in here and listening to songs and you coming in here and singing songs. And so we need to worship and we need to hear the sermon, but we also need to understand God moves on this property every day. And it's powerful. So I could tell you so many stories that I can't, I don't have time. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. All right. You guys go ahead. Um, listen to the words of the song. God, you stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. Listen to these words. You stood before my failure. You carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So I'll walk, listen to the words, so I'll walk upon salvation. Your spirit alive in me. Somebody say amen. amen. My life to declare your promise. Wait, 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 let's do it again. My life to declare your promise. Hear it again. My life to declare your promise. My life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. So I'll stand. With arms high and heart abandoned. Listen to the words. With arms high and heart abandoned. You got to hear that. In awe of the one who gave it all, I'll stand. My soul, Lord, to you, listen to the word, surrendered. All I am is yours. Y'all, you got to understand, this song is all about surrender. It doesn't feel that way. This song feels like a victory song because it's I'll stand. But it's really not about that. This song is all about surrender. Yes, sir. And so this sermon is going to be all about surrender. And so I need to say a couple of things to start with because... I'm concerned of two different ways that you are going to run away from the word surrender or run toward it the wrong way. Now, now, now watch. I'm concerned that you're going to run away from the word surrender because the word surrender feels weak. It feels wrong. We're Americans. We don't surrender. We're self-sufficient. We don't surrender. We, we fight. We don't surrender. We don't so much as surrender our place in line, much less anything else. We don't surrender. I was driving the other day and somebody, they knew it was merging in. And I mean, as the cones were closed and they came up beside me and I was like, oh no. <laughs> we don't surrender. You see what I'm saying, right? Surrender feels weak and it feels wrong, but I need you to understand this. Surrender to God. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Surrender to what Jesus wants to do in our lives is not weak, nor is it, nor is it wrong. There is nothing weak or soft about surrender to Christ. The Christ we serve is the man who suffered a beating beyond anything anyone could imagine and then hung on a cross, none of which he deserved, and he did it because he loved you and I. Come on. That's a man. Yes, sir. That is not weak. There's nothing weak in that. Yeah. 
There's nothing, there's nothing broken in that. There's nothing wrong in that. That's love displayed at its deepest, most powerful level. And that's where we are to surrender. So I need you to understand on this Father's Day that surrender is not weak when it's surrender to the God who makes us everything we were created to be. It is not weak and it is not wrong. Secondly, some of you have been in the church a long time. And some of you grew up in the same church I did, the Holiness Church. I've always been a Wesleyan. Even when I wasn't a Wesleyan, I went to a church that now that I'm older and think back to the sermons, they were Wesleyans. I've always been a Wesleyan, which means I've always been in the holiness movement, which means I've spent a lot of my life around legalistic people. Because over the years, as, as, as holiness folks, we have measured your holiness by the length of your hair. You see, if you're a man, your hair has to be short, then you're holy. And if you're a woman, your hair has to be long, then you're holy. Y'all, I've told you before, I was spending the night at my, gra- my, 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 my grandma and grandpa Freeman's house. I turned the corner and almost, al- almost fell out. There was this woman standing in front of the mirror with hair down to here. I had no idea who that was. It was my grandma. She had all her life had hair that long, but she pulled it up in a bun. Y'all remember the holiness wad on top of women's head? Some of y'all have no idea what I'm talking about. But when we were growing up, all the women had their hair up in a bun. It was a holiness thing. It was a sanctified honey bun on top of her head. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I went, <gasps> and then I realized it was her. I never knew she had hair that long. Y'all, she was like in her mid eighties before she cut her hair. And somebody asked her, why'd you cut your hair? She said, I got tired of messing with it. Mm. You reckon she was tired of messing with it 60 years ago, yeah. Yeah. but they were measuring her holiness. But y'all understand, we used to measure holiness based on the clothes you were, you wore. We used to measure holiness based on the, the, the language you used. And I don't mean by you cussed or you didn't cuss, though we measured by that. I meant by whether you prayed in the King James or not. Some of y'all don't remember that. I remember that. Oh, most kind and holy heavenly father, wouldst thou come upon us to thine people on this here day? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It was messed up. They were talking a language you were like, you don't talk like that. I was around you yesterday. You didn't talk like that. You know? <laughs> so anyway, that we used to measure holiness in all kinds of ways. It didn't make sense. And we called it surrender. But what we were surrendered to was legalism, not the Holy Spirit. I need you to understand that our surrender to God, I want you, I want you to hear me, is not weak. But secondly, I need you to understand our surrender to God is not about us. You see, we always measured our holiness by, by our actions because we wanted the presence of the Holy Spirit to make us holy. We wanted God to, I, well, look, look, I wanted God to make me holy. I thought once I got saved, what the Holy Spirit's work was, was to make me an awesome person. I need you to understand, and I want everybody to hear me because what I'm about to say is complex. And this is probably why I had a hard time with it last night, but I want you to hear it and I want you to understand it. The Holy Spirit will make you better. Everybody's got it? But that's not the point. The point is that the Holy Spirit reaches other people through you. Do you understand that? You do not get saved so that God can make you a good person. You get saved so that God can make you a person that reaches other people. I got about 12 amens. I'm going to try it again. (laughs) Let let me try it this way. Salvation is for you, but it's not about you. Everybody's got it? I want to say say this after me. Salvation is for me, but it's not about me. You understand what I mean when I say that? Because some of us just want to be better people. And, and so we, what do we do? We go into personalize. Everything's about me. And look, look, I, I'm going to say something. I don't want anybody to get mad at me, okay? I try to teach this everywhere I go. I'm uncomfortable 
with discipleship for the sake of discipleship. Because when we have discipleship for the sake of discipleship, you're just trying to make you better. You need to be making you better so that you can make your kids better. Not for you, but for them. So that you can, so that you can see your neighbors come to Christ. Not for you, but for them. You got to control who you are so that you can influence who they are. Does that make sense? That's what we've got to understand. That's what we got to come to grips with. The, the, the truth is that salvation is for me, but it's not about me. Watch what Paul says. It, it, go with me to, a, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to start reading with verse, with verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, the apostle Paul writing, he said, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Can I just tell you as a holiness, growing up in a holiness, a legalistic holiness movement, I ne- the first sermon I ever heard preached on that verse, I preached. I never heard a sermon preached on that verse because we didn't want to tell holiness people that. We didn't want to tell, we did not want to read the words to legalistic people, I have the right to do anything. It's like, you know, in in a holy, some of y'all are doing it right now. No, I don't. Well, no, you don't. But you got to understand, it's the Holy Spirit guiding you, not somebody else's definition of law. So I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Watch, no one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Salvation is for you, but it's not about you. See, this is something I got to get us to understand. We come to church and we say, I just want to be, I want to worship and I want to be fed. Feed me, just feed me. And when we just come to church and we just soak in all the good things of God, but then we don't try to reach anybody else. We're acting like salvation is about me. Y'all all right? We're acting like the church is about me and the church is just for me and it's not for everybody else. We don't bring anybody else in here because we think to ourselves, this is for me, it's not for everybody else. No, listen to me. The grace of God, the forgiveness of the blood of Jesus is for everyone. And it is, it is for you, but it is not about you. So he's so clear on this. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Eat anything sold in the meat market without, without, asking, without raising questions of conscience, for the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. You say, what in the world is that all about? Well, you got to understand. The apostle Paul is speaking in Corinthians to a group of Jewish believers who are living in a non-Jewish culture. Therefore, they have been raised their entire life in a legalistic system, and they have been told you are not to eat certain things. Now, all of a sudden, they live in a non-Jewish culture, and the things they are not supposed to eat are being offered to them on a daily basis. And they have a choice. They can reject them or they can receive them. Y'all, can I be honest with you? If you ever move to the South and you expect to evangelize somebody, you better learn to eat barbecue. (laughs) Y'all all all right? This is a perfect example here. They're not in a Jewish culture anymore and people are offering them barbecue. Pork, y'all, smoked pork. And they're like, I can't eat that. Why? Because the Jewish dietary laws say I can't eat that. And the apostle Paul says, you're no longer under law. Pork is all right. Get your barbecue on. (laughs) In fact, somewhere in here in the Greek, it says, and use a vinegar-based sauce. It's of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. I mean, you see what I'm saying? You're like, why does every sermon have to be about food? (laughs) It's where my world is. I'm sorry. Look, 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 look. The the truth is the apostle Paul is saying, surrender these moments to God so that he can use you to reach people. Watch. We got to surrender every moment of my life. You got to surrender every moment to God. 
This is not a one-time thing where we walk. This is what I used to believe. I grew up believing that if I ever came to the altar at the right time with the right attitude in the right, in the right spirit, in the right service, when the Holy Spirit was here just right, they would smack me on the forehead and I would never sin again. I don't know why I thought that. I thought if I ever once just get sanctified and I just needed somebody to sanctify me. I needed somebody to reach up with power and I'd be fine. But that is that that has not happened. And at this point in my life, I got to tell you, I think I had it wrong. That's a wrong expectation. This is a matter of watch surrendering every moment to Christ. It's a practice you get into. Y'all, it's a habit you get into. It's something you learn to do. You have to put yourself in a mindset that I'm going to surrender every moment to Christ. We were, on, um, we were on a missions trip to Russia one time. I was young in ministry and we went there. The, 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 iron, the iron Curtain had just fallen. USSR was gone. Russia had just transitioned and uh, they were allowing Westerners in, especially to do culture, cultural exchange. And so we were moving into this area to, uh, to teach in the high schools. And so we were teaching about American culture in the high schools and American, what, what are important dates in the American calendar, those kind of things, so they could better understand what Americans were like. And, uh, and so uh, on, on Friday of that, here's what they did. They brought us in, they, they, they got us all together, they, they got us ready, and then they were going to release us to stay with family. So for a week, I lived with a Russian family, and the only person in the family that spoke English was a 13-year-old boy who was in English class in high school. So it was not easy to communicate, I'm just telling you. And so for a week, we lived in there. And, um, and it, was just, it was just me that went into that house. And they said, listen, on Friday, they're going to hold a dance at the high school. Now, you got to understand, at this point in time, Wesleyans were not allowed to dance. We just weren't. Y'all are going, oh, I know. But, you know, it was that legalistic thing. And somebody decided somewhere down the road that you shouldn't dance. You know, and so, in fact, it was bad, you know. It was pretty rough. I mean, not that we could anyway. But, but we could have at least tried, you know? So they said, they're going to hold a dance on Friday. They looked at us and they said, when they hold the dance, you will dance. We went, oh. <laughs> and so it's okay. They said, look, if you don't, you're going to insult the people because this is their culture, not yours. Wow. When you go to the market... Eat what's put in front of you. Don't, 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 don't simply reject something just because it's not from your tradition. You're following me? Here's the problem, church. We don't surrender every moment. We try to stay trapped in our tradition. And if we can get them to conform to our tradition, then we'll allow them to have our Jesus. Wow. The problem is they need Jesus and they don't really need our tradition. Y'all all right? I just need you to understand. You say, well, that, we don't do that. Thank God we don't do that. Come on now. They, not, they come in here and they don't need a cookie and you're offended. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We got to come up with, anyway, let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. I'm going to get lost. I got lost in this last night, okay? Eat anything sold at the meat market. For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Verse 27. If an unbeliever invites you to a barbecue... And you want to go eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered to as a sacrifice, then do not eat it both for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience. Wait, 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 wait. Both for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience, I'm referring to the other person's conscience, not yours. For why is my freedom being judged by another's conscience? If I, if I take part in the meal with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of something I have thanked God for? Now, now watch. We got to surrender every moment to Christ, but we've also got to surrender every desire to Christ. 
Our desires must be surrendered. You say, well, I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be part of that. I don't desire. Listen, you got to surrender your desires to Christ because it's not about you. <coughs> Y'all, <clears throat> God allows us to enjoy this life. Somebody say amen. amen. God allows us to have good things in this life. Somebody say amen. amen. God allows us to do what we want to an awful lot in this life. Somebody say amen. Amen means so be it, so we're all in agreement. All those are good things, right? But we've got to understand that even though God allows those things, it's not about me. If your spiritual life is about you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna significantly impact anybody else around you. Because it won't, they won't matter. Y'all all right? You say, but if I don't take care of me, I won't matter. God will make sure you matter. You need to make sure God matters. It's about him. You got to surrender every moment. You got to surrender every desire. Every desire surrendered to him. Think about this just a moment. If I surrender every moment of my life to Christ and I'm following the Holy Spirit, however he leads in any given moment, and then I surrender my desires to Christ, now Christ is actually getting to the point that the Holy Spirit can lead me in a given moment. That, and the Holy Spirit will not only, y'all, 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 I, 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 listen, hear me out. Then the Holy Spirit will not only lead me to barbecue, he will lead me to the right barbecue. Because it's not about me and it's not about the barbecue. It's about the folks I'm sharing the barbecue with. And they need Jesus. Amen. Understand this, right? God might on your vacation put you next to somebody that needs Christ. You say, well, I'm on vacation. You're on vacation from work, not God. Y'all all right? The truth is God might use you in any situation. We've got to allow him to do so. We've got to allow him to do so. Here, 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 verse, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Listen to these words. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God even as I try to please everyone in every way. I've got to surrender every moment to Christ. I got to surrender every desire to Christ and I got to surrender every purpose in my life to Christ. Every purpose. I know what the purpose of your life is. I don't know what God has called you to make a living at. I don't know any of those things. I don't know anything about your career. I don't know any of that, but I know what your purpose in life is. Your purpose in life is to reach the lost around you with the good news of Jesus Christ. And I know that because that's everybody's, every Christian's purpose. You see, the Apostle Paul, I could take you on a journey where the Apostle Paul says clearly in the book of Romans that, that, that it's not about the legalism. I can take you on a journey where the Apostle Paul in the book, in the book of Philippians says, and some people preach out of good motives, some people out of wrong motives, some people preach the gospel just to get at me and just to make my life tough. But it doesn't matter as long as they're preaching the gospel, thank God the gospel is preached even if they're preaching it just to make me, make, make, to hurt me. Even if somebody's down the road just preaching the gospel to try to empty out New Life Church, well, thank God they're preaching the gospel. If they empty out New Life Church, then we better do our job better. You follow what I'm saying? It's not about us. Uh, say it after me one more time. The gospel is for me, the gospel is for me. but it's not about me. You understand that, right? Yeah. You're getting that together. The apostle Paul says, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. He literally sees his entire life as bringing glory to the name of Jesus Christ, bringing other, other people to know Christ. That's what we're surrendered to. We're not just surrendered to some abstract idea of holiness that turns into legalism. We are surrendered to the person of Jesus Christ who wants to change us so he can make us into someone who can reach other people. I, you know, to those who are under the law, I become like those under the law. To those who are not under the law, I become like those not under the law. I, I become all things to all people. Paul writes these things. I become to all things to all people so that I might win a few. Paul is looking to reach anybody any way he can. And the truth is, he's got to figure out how to do that. 
He said, well, what, 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 what does that mean? Watch, 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 watch. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. You see it? I stand. What? I stand. I stand with arms high. Watch. And heart abandoned. I've surrendered my desires. Why? So that I can bring glory to God. Watch. I stand. But I do not stand in defiance. Church, listen to me. We spent too many of our years standing in defiance. And can I be honest with you? It matters not what political affiliation you are. The Democrats stand in defiance of the government for one reason. The Republicans stand in defiance of the government for another. And we stand supposedly as Christians in defiance. Gee, God, look, we we don't stand in defiance. There are times we might, but we don't make that the point. We stand, listen, we stand, hear me, we stand in surrender. That's good. We stand in surrender. You don't, you don't, watch, watch. I don't stand in defiance and I don't stand in victory. Because when I try to stand in victory, that becomes pride. If I stand in defiance, that becomes arrogance. If I stand, if I stand in, if I stand in pride, that holds me away from the people around me. Every doctrine, every theology has its downside. I need you to hear me. Thank God for the holiness doctrine. I believe in it. I'll preach it my whole life. I do not have to be a Wesley in my entire life. I just got to follow God. You you hear me, right? But I believe in holiness theology. I believe the power of the Holy Spirit can change us and should have an effect on my everyday life, every minute of every day. But it only happens if I stand in surrender. Not in victory, not in holiness, not in defiance, not in any of those other things, but in surrender. You say those two words don't even go together, stand and surrender. They do in Christ. Because it's in our surrender to Christ that we're able to stand at all. But we stand for the right reason. Because the gospel is for me, but it's not about me. And it's also for everybody else in my world. I stand with arms high. And heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I stand. My soul, Lord, to you surrendered. All I am is yours. I wonder, could you make that a real theme in your life? Could you actually surrender to God that way? I mean, let, me, let me just, I'm going to have the band. The band is going to come out. We're going to sing this song again. And again, it's, it's a closing part of our service today. And it's part of, it's part of, it's part of our learning. It's part of our teaching. So I want you to be part of that. But, but can I ask you a question? Can you sing this today as a declaration of a decision that you make? Not just because everybody around you is singing it. Not just because the pastor asked you not to rush out to your car. Not just because it's what we're supposed to do. But can you actually make this a declaration of your life? Can you actually look at, look at Christ spiritually and say you stood before creation. Eternity was in your hands. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul. Now to stand. You stood before my failure. Anybody in here ever had failure? Come on. You carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders. My soul now to stand. So what can I say? What can I do? But offer this life, oh God, completely to you. So I'll walk upon salvation. Your spirit alive in me. My life Listen to it again. Now that we've gone through what Paul says, my life to declare your promise. 
My life surrendered to the good news. My life surrendered to the gospel. My life surrendered to declare that Jesus is the answer for everybody, everywhere, every time, and every way. Yes, sir. My life to declare your promise. My soul now to stand. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned. In awe of the one who gave it all, I'll stand. My soul, Lord, to you surrendered. All I am is yours.